this is it. Uh, this is a moment for us to claim and embrace and, and then to begin to kind of get a sense of what vision God has cast out in front of us to move forward as a church. So uh, let's, uh, let's all be a part of that. But, but as we get started, it's also what we call our yearly conference. There will be a few meeting-like elements in our service. But I think you'll agree when we're all said and done, this will be the least meeting meeting you've ever been in. So uh, I would like to introduce to you our district superintendent, Bill Haggard, who will be running the meeting portions of our service. Just turn it to the on position. Let's, then maybe they're just needing to do that. Power is, let's take, uh, there we go, there we go, thank you, thank you, I should have kept talking. That's closer than I ever want to get to our superintendent, yeah. but. I, was, I wasn't sure when he mentioned the pig guy who he was talking about, <laughs> uh, maybe that was, it is a joy to be with you this morning. Um, traditionally, the uh, church conference is, the, is indeed the annual meeting, and uh, Phil and, the, and your leaders have, have put together uh, a wonderful way to, to celebrate uh, both the business pieces that are a part of that and the celebration of ministry. So I'm looking forward to this morning. It's going to be a great day. And uh, I, I just am, am so honored and pleased to be with you this morning. Uh, my understanding is it's the 132nd uh, annual church conference uh, for Community Church. And I celebrate that with you as well. Bring you greetings uh, from our uh, bishop, uh, Bishop uh, Deborah Kesey. And uh, again, it is a joy to be with you. Uh, we need to call the, um, this, this church conference uh, to order, so I would do that. And the first thing that we need to do is elect a secretary who's going to keep track of all of the business pieces. Yes? And I'll name Wendy Hawkins. All right. Is there support for Wendy serving in this role? Thank you very much. I see support. All those in favor, please say yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, if you're opposed, you'll probably get the pin, so, all right. <laughs> Thank you. It's going to be a joy to be with you this morning. I look forward to it, and we're going to have a great time of worship. Thank you. Great. As we kind of get rolling today, I want to uh, point out uh, that we have a very special person in our midst, not just today, but all the time. Uh, I am blessed as your pastor to have another clergy person here in retired status among us, and Sandy Harriman is, uh, as you know, someone that might come and visit you in the hospital, uh, respond to other kinds of important needs, and always there giving me good advice and support and encouragement. And, and so I want you to welcome her as our retired pastor and resident. She often uh, is here, you know, just dressed just like any one of us. She's not wearing robes. Sometimes on communion Sundays, she serves with us. Uh, and You'll see her in her robes, and that's, that's why I want you to know, and I want others who are new among us to know that she is a, a clergy person in full standing, and just uh, we're just totally thrilled to have her here. Um, let's uh, take a moment, let's greet each other, and I'll call you back with a call to worship in just a minute. Good morning again. <laughs> Good morning again. Good morning. Good to see you. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. How you doing? Good morning. Please remain standing and uh, let's join together in the call to worship. We gather today to celebrate this faith community. May our hearts be open to God's presence. We celebrate the love that we have for one another. We support 
that support we give to one another and the journey we are on together. May we open ourselves to God's vision for our future. How amazing it can be, the future we are creating through God's grace. Praise be to God. Amen. 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 And as we open in worship, we want to ask a question. It's a question we ask each other as we come together for this church conference. Are we yet alive? And I'm proud to say that I think as a church we are alive and we're ready to meet Christ and we're ready to see him here this morning and then to go out and take him to his people. So we're going to sing basically the story of the church and what our last year might have been like. And are we yet alive? And are we yet alive and see each other's face? Glory and thanks to Jesus, if for his almighty grace. Reserved by power divine to full salvation here again in Jesus. Jesus' grace we join, and in His sight appear. What troubles have we seen? What mighty conflict past? Fighting without and fears within, since we assembled last. Yet out of all the Lord has brought us by His love, and still He does His help afford and hides our life above. Then let us make our boast of His redeeming power, which saves us to the uttermost till we can sin no more. Let us take up the cross till we the crown obtain and gladly reckon all things lost so we I invite you to join our opening prayer. We'll be kind of a call and response prayer this morning. You can find a follow-up with the yellow words up on the screen here. Let us unite in this statement of mission for Community United Methodist Church. Our mission is to be a beacon of hope to our community by sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. We are called by grace and guided by love as we seek to offer a faith that works in real life. In whose name will you carry out this mission? We will carry out this mission in the name of the one God, creator, sustainer, and redeemer. Through whose example and teachings will you find relationship to God? We will find relationship to God through the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. With whom do you stand in the face of this enormous task? We stand with the apostles and with the great cloud of witnesses throughout the centuries, which leads all the way to North Muskegon, our faith home, and our place of mission for today. Amen. You may be seated. As you're being seated, we invite our children that are bringing a special song to us this morning to come forward. Charles Wesley Hymns said 30, 40 verses sometimes. So. Just, the, just the kids that have practiced this morning, the singing. <laughs> and then after we sing our special music, we'll have all the children come forward.
Any more kids? Come on down. Any other kids in here? We've got a few of them. This is a good time. You'll want to be down here to help me with something. Also to receive something that we've got for you. A couple more coming down. Anybody that's here is welcome to come down today. This is a fun time. And I need your help anyway. So come on down. Oh, where's your sister? We just got one. Okay, we'll see how long. Oh, there she is. Come on down. We'll see how long we keep them. All right. Everybody's welcome to come on down. Well, today um, we have something we want to make available to you guys. Our church has always been a church that's given Bibles to children. We've typically given Bibles to children when they're in second grade. And this year we're kind of changing it up a little bit. We're going to give a new Bible that we've uh, found that we really like. It's called the Beginner's Bible. And this is going to go to kids that are uh, nursery on up to uh, first grade or through first grade. And it's got the stories in it which are just wonderful. And uh, so these are things that will be read to the kids, and then as they start reading, this is really good for them to practice in. And it's the stories of the Old and New Testament. I think you guys are going to like this, the younger ones. Then we decided second grade is good. We'll continue second grade on, on up through fifth grade, and that's the Adventure Bible. This is a Bible with the whole scriptures in it but it has a lot of wonderful things that can help and some pictures and stuff like that. So you guys are going to like this. This is for the second through fifth. And then for the middle school kids, this is the Bible that they're going to get. This is a great one because it has some, some things that help middle school kids kind of along the way and special things that are kind of added to the scripture. I'll open one up here so you all can see. But the middle school kids are going to get this guy. And... Uh, as they're reading, it stops and it says something about love. When it's talking about love, it talks about what that might feel like for a middle school kid. So along with this, this is a new thing that we're working on here in this church. For those that have a phone or a, a pad or something, we're going to provide an app that goes along with this Bible so that they can have some resources with them all the time. Now, for the high school kids... We're still doing the research, but we're looking for a Bible that is an app. We'll provide a, a hard copy Bible for any of our high school kids that want them. But they're going to have their Bible that's going to come on a phone or come on a pad or come to their computer. So it's just kind of a whole new kind of a world that we're in. And distributing Bibles isn't the same thing as when I was in second grade when I got my first one at the church. And so we're trying to be uh, kind of flexing to that. So what I'm going to do today is... I'm going to start by distributing the ones to the littlest kids. And Terry, why don't you help me? Uh, if, you're in, if you're from the nursery on up through first grade, raise your hand. 
because this is the first time, and you've not gotten one of these yet. So you guys get one of these. If you're, if you're first grade or under, you get one of these kind. First grade or under. There we go. There we go. First grade or under, you get one of these. Everybody got one? Did you get one yet? Oh, she's back. She is back. All right, here's one for you. Give it to Mom. It's always a good move. All right, we've, we've got more if we need them. Anybody else, first grade or under? All right. All right, there you go. Now, those that are second grade that haven't already received these, because we've been using these for a few years. Anybody not received one of these yet? All right. Second, third, fourth, and fifth. Second, third, fourth, and fifth, if you haven't got one already. And once you get up in the children's church and worship area, they'll check on it, make sure you're all set. And those kids that aren't here today will get them at children's worship and nursery in the weeks ahead. So everybody will get them, so don't worry, okay? Anybody else? we miss anybody? Do I have any middle school kids in the room? Any middle school kids in the room? All right. I already opened yours. Is that okay? All right. Anybody else? Yes. All right. Any other middle school kids? Make sure you middle school kids. You're high school. Make sure you middle school kids let us know. Yep. Yeah, the kindergarten ones. Yeah, first grade on down. Kindergarten, get this one. Give me a kindergarten one. What's that? Zach needs one? Give one to Zach. I got him. You get this one. There you go. Excellent. Wow, that was kind of hard. Wait. Yeah, make an announcement about that. Also, starting uh, today, if your kids are here, we'd like to have them continue coming because we're going to put on a, a Christmas program towards Christmas, so they are going to be involved in the play and singing, so we'd like to have them keep coming and practicing for that. Okay, will you guys help me with something? What? <laughs> I do not want you guys to listen in on that response. The answer is yes. Yeah, the answer is yes. Okay, way to go, Adam. All right. Anybody have anything great happen in your life this year? What happened? You just know great things happen. You don't know what. Yeah, okay, a little of that. Yes. You did what? You. Oh, okay, good. Yes. Christmas play, yes, coming up, yeah. Excellent. You got a book. And it's your book. Exactly. My book. And your sister says, My book. I can't tell the books apart, I can't tell you apart. This is going to be good. All right. The church also has a lot of things that people are excited about here. And over the last few weeks, people have turned into me things that they are excited about this church that have happened in recent past. And so what Wendy's done is she's made some placards. So you guys, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read off these sheets. I got a whole pile of them. I want you to... I want you to get in a line and take one over to these guys on the ladder or the ones down by the floor, and they're going to do something with them. And then you come back and get another one, okay? Who'll get in my line first? Ooh, Adam, all right. It says, church improvements. We added a light to the flagpole to illuminate the flag at night. Holy Week, during Holy Week, we, we offered a special Seder meal. Lake Michigan Camp, we had a volunteer crew of, travel, of people travel to Lake Michigan Camp in Pentwater and work to clean up and get the camp open. Boy Scouts, our troops continue to support mission for area people, MAP, 911 Salute, and Scouting Programs. Community and Compass, this year we've supported this local ministry by giving over $1,600. We put our services online since last November. We've offered video of our services uh, on a website. The Sarah Circle collected personal care items for Family Promise. 
The trustees uh, have kept the church and parsonage in good condition, completing needed repairs. Lake Louise crew, we had a volunteer crew of people travel all the way up north to help open Camp Kennewin and do a lot of special work there. BBS, our Vacation Bible School attendance, was up 36% this summer. This summer we averaged 114 kids every day at BBS. Fall kickoff, we celebrated fall with a kickoff and a tailgate party. We all had a blast, didn't we, with those inflatables. Memorial gifts, through memorial gifts we received a new altar Bible. That's the one right there. Yak, the youth area, the youth, the young adult uh, committee sent out gifts to, throughout the year to 20 of our young people, and boy, did my kids like that. Memorial gifts, through the memorial gifts, we received our new Christ candle, which is burning on the altar right now. My child said to me yesterday, Yay, I love my church! Fall kickoff, the fall kickoff party had great attendance, fun for kids, and reached out to the community. Helping Hands. Helping Hands organized a team of volunteers to paint the exterior of a person's home. Junior Worship. The children love their new worship room, and a service is geared just for their age. We sent 24 youth and adults to Tennessee this summer to support Appalachia Service Project. The United Methodist Women supported MAP, Mission for Area People. The United Methodist Women supported the Crop Walk. The J team, which are the youth, our senior high youth, have provided five meals in support of the Family Promise Ministry at First Lutheran. And that's one of the few churches, it may be the only, where the youth go and take the meal to that family every time we do it. The J team, our youth, our senior high gatherings have continued to grow. They enjoy food. Come on, they do? Food. And exploring their faith and hanging out with friends. The J team, 26 youth and adults, spent a winter weekend at... Spring Hill Camp in Everett had a lot of fun and faith. This summer, uh, this summer, United Methodist women purchased T-shirts for those walking in the North Muskegon Parade. Member Care sent cards conveying our love and prayerful support to those in need, and they sent a lot of cards. Small groups uh, have been popping up all over the congregation. These groups wrestle with tough questions and rejoice in life's victories. You want to take that over there? Girl Scouts, we've begun hosting a new Girl Scout troop on Thursday night. Oh, you didn't get one. Haiti Hot Lunch, with your help this year, we've given nearly $700 to feed children Haiti Hot Lunch. Member Care, regularly we sent over 13 cards to 13 shut-ins. The college students, with your gifts, we've given over $500 to support students through the Wesley Foundations on Student Day. United Methodist Women have faithfully made and served funeral luncheons throughout the year. United Methodist Women supplied the Sunday morning coffee. Yay! The member care coordinated meals for 10 families who were experiencing temporary difficulties. Member care connected and offered mentor support for over 20 new church attendees and members. Mission auction. Our 2013 mission auction raised nearly $13,000. Member Care, give a gas card to a family with continuing medical challenges this year. The 39ers, which aren't really 39 anymore, uh, met every uh, third Wednesday of the month, and uh, they're retirees, and they get together for potluck activities. Uh, board member of the, of the MCCC, Doug, is the cooperating church's rep from our church. Somebody who's celebrating that. Member care, we sent out regular mailings to our military family members. Oh, president of MAP, Roy Beetham is the president of Mission for Area People. He's one of our own. Good Friday, we celebrated the, with First Lutheran here in this room to offer a meaningful Good Friday service to the community. On Easter Sunday, our services reached nearly 300 people. Board member of MAP, Mark Dolly, serves on the board member, uh, as a board member on the Mission for Area People. The United Methodist Women in March, our United Methodist Women hosted a district spring fling. Our Appalachia service team proudly displayed community church car magnets all the way to Tennessee. The Martha Circle supports every women's place. Red Cross, we proudly support the Red Cross blood drives every month here in our church. 
Junior worship in 2013 alone, our junior worship attendance is up over 20%. Martha Circle uh, took a bus trip to Turkeyville last uh, month and had 47 people attend. Junior worship, our junior worship kids have donated over $300 to Happer International. Parsonage improvements, we bought a new lawnmower for the parsonage. Thank goodness. This one's a push one, though. With, with, our, with, with your, I guess they know I need a walk, right, Gail? Yeah, you guys. With your support, we gave $6,900 to Mission for Area People in the past year. This is the lead support church in the community for MAP. Pretty amazing, you guys. Way to go. Um, Grace Children's Hospital, Grace Children's Hospital in Haiti has received over $200 from us this year. The crop walk with, uh, was helped with walkers and we sponsored and raised over $2,500 this year. African University, we sent over $1,500 this year. Christmas Eve, we had a 48% increase in attendance Christmas Eve this year over last. World Hunger, in the past year our church supported World Hunger with $4,100. Uh, parsonage improvements. We bought a new dryer for the parsonage. I was glad for that. <laughs> Salvation Army. This year we've given $1,100 to Salvation Army. Can you believe all these things, you guys? My goodness. Community, uh, uh, let's see, we began offering classes of 101 to 401 for people that are newly connecting and, and people have been around for a while so they know what our church is about. Church cleanup. Each spring and summer, many generous volunteers have given their time to clean the churchyard. Junior Worship DVDs, our congregation gave funds so that we could buy all the Bible series for our church, which is, I don't know, seven, eight hundred dollars or something. Stephen Ministry, our Stephen Ministry has been revitalized and is making a difference in our church and community. Family camping, our, our family camps had over 130 people this year in both the holidays and the end and beginning of summer. This year, United Methodist Women paid for repairs that were made to the kitchen downstairs and the dishwasher, the countertops, and backsplashes. Um, worship in the Park. This summer we offered a Worship in the Park service. We averaged 42 people throughout the summer, and our summer attendance was higher than it's been in over a decade, probably longer, in the summer. Family Promise. We participated with First Lutheran to serve Family Promise people. We got a new piano, which is yet to be delivered, but it's a, actually one that's being given to us by an electric piano by one of the families of the church. Worship Imagination Conference. We held a conference where we had 20 people reflecting on worship and what we're going to do in the future. Uh, Family Promise, we gave over $2,500 to Family Promise this year. All Saints Day, we have begun a new way of recognizing all saints. Church Improvements installed new countertops in the kitchen. We got that one. We must have done that twice. Uh, nursery, through Memorial Gifts, we've installed a parent pager system. You want to take that one? Memorial Garden. The Memorial Garden has been cleaned up and is receiving regular maintenance now. All right. Easter sunrise, we've started a new sunrise service on Easter. Camp Finley, over in New York, we sent a team of work people to do work camp things at Finley and do repairs and things way over in New York. Trustees, we hired a new custodian and Valerie is doing great. Junior Worship installed a new computer and TV for Junior Worship services. Church Improvement, the trustees installed new shelves for the music for the choir. And last but not least, Church Improvements received a donated lawnmower for the church. This one's a rider. <laughs> All right. Thank you, you guys. Let's, let's... Wow, look at all those things. Let's, uh, let's close this time with the Lord's Prayer. Let's pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. All righty. Thanks, you guys.
Thank you. Great. Appreciate that. A lot to celebrate. Um, a good year of ministry, and I give thanks for that. As we look ahead to the next year, uh, we have some business to care for, uh, and, and that is a part of the church conference as well. And I, I just want to say to those of you who are, are visiting perhaps this morning, um, you don't need to worry about having a responsibility in this. Uh, we're glad you're here and uh, look forward to your uh, hearing about the things that are happening and uh, the things that will be happening. But as we take votes and things, you don't need to be concerned about that. It's the members of the church that will be voting and caring for these, these pieces. All right? Um, the first thing that we have uh, as we look at this, uh, as we look at the wall and all the things that happened this last year, is to look ahead to the leadership uh, for next year. And so I would invite the representatives, uh, George. Phil and um, George, to come and uh, help us see the uh, folks who are going to be serving for 2014. Our church is a very unique uh, congregation in that we have uh, not simply the pastor overseeing this process, but we got George, and he has been just very, very important to me in this process. I feel blessed because when I walked in the door, I felt overwhelmed by all the different things that this church is a part and been doing and plans to do on into the future. So George has been just invaluable. And so, uh, George, do you want to say anything to the congregation about their involvement in the church? It hasn't been just me. It's also been uh, the whole nominating committee that has, has been working uh, you know, throughout the year. Um, and so I want to thank, thank all the other members of, of that committee for all their help. Uh, if you look at, at, at the insert, uh, the yellow insert you have in there, uh, I call that the opportunity sheet. Uh, and, uh, you know, this, this shows the committee makeup that uh, we're pro proposing for 2014. <laughs> However, you'll notice there's a lot of blanks in there. And uh, so we're looking for, for others. Uh, you know, if you feel led to serve on, it, on any of these committees, please let us know that so that we can uh, uh, get you on there. The committees work throughout the year and do all kinds of good work. And uh, so we're looking forward to, to you helping us with that. Again, thank you. Now, some of the blanks that you'll see are related to a new structural change, a streamlining that's going on in our midst. In the past, we had three classes of three, making up most committees of about nine people. We've made a decision that in 14, in 2014, we'll go to three classes of two, which leaves the class of 13 kind of blank in many cases because what we're, what we're doing is skinning them down to six people in each setting. We had a lot of people in order to reach that nine number that were double, triple, and even quadruple dipping in committees. And we wanted to kind of push that off to the side and not have all that going on. Because again, beginning in January, we're going to have meetings. Many of our meetings will happen at the same time on Wednesday nights. And we'll explain more of that as we go towards uh, January. So um, there's always room. If you've got an interest, we won't take nominations from the floor today. But we'd be glad, George and I, to hear from you in the days and weeks ahead if you would like to serve on any of these committees. So we place not simply new names, but the whole slate before the conference body today. All right. And uh, in addition to this being before you, generally we have an enabling motion that allows the uh, church leadership, uh, church council, to fill any vacancies that need to be filled throughout the year. So we don't have to follow this structure every time we give that power and opportunity to the to the church council. So that goes along with this report. I, any questions? See your name where you weren't expecting it, anything like that? <laughs> <laughs> All right. You look ready to go. All those in favor, please say yes. 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 Any opposed? All right. These folks are in place as your leaders for 2014. Thank you for your response and your willingness to serve uh, in this way. All right, next uh, we'll receive our membership report, and Wendy has that for us. Good morning. Um, simply, as you can see on the screen in just a moment, in 2012 we reported to the conference a uh, re membership of 351 people. Year to date we have added six new members, and we have subtracted six members, and we have baptized eight new individuals. If you are interested in seeing a very detailed list, let me know see me throughout the week or give me an email and I can get that for you. Okay, and we, we have no one on the first or second year, is that correct? That's okay. correct. 
So this is simply before you uh, as a report and uh, for informational purposes. We don't have to take any action on that. All right, uh, Step Parish, Dwayne. Bill, we have three motions that we need to bring in front of everyone today. Uh, the first one is the clergy salary support. That's a 3% increase, and it's $61,719. I think that averages out to about $1.50 an hour for. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dwayne. And Steph? Parish, uh, your Steph Parish uh, is, is a busy committee. These folks uh, serve your church and your ministry very well. Uh, so this is before us. Any questions about that? All right. Uh, all those in favor, please say yes. Yes. Any opposed? Thank you. The next motion is the furnishing allowance is $5,000 that I believe is included in the $61,719. So it's not added $5,000, but it allows uh, Phil and Gail to go out and buy a bigger bed if they needed it or whatever. <laughs> so that's what, that's what we recommend. Thank you. Yeah, furnishings allowance is not additional money. It's simply a, uh, an opportunity that the Internal Revenue Service gives to clergy uh, to deduct from their gross salary uh, things that are used to buy things at the parsonage. Uh, I did have a church conference not long ago where uh, someone asked if the, the pastor's Michigan State uh, posters and paraphernalia counted in the furnishings of my <laughs> And I've been telling people that, that the Michigan State things didn't, but the Michigan things did, but after yesterday, I, <laughs> I'm just sad. So uh, This is before you. Any questions? All right, all those in favor, please say yes. yes. Any opposed? Thank you. Generally, I want to pause here just one second. Generally, um, we have time at the end of the conference um, for a pastor's report, um, and perhaps uh, Pastor Phil is going to be sharing some of that within the context of the message today. I don't know. But uh, what I like to do, uh, and I've heard so many good things, is simply give you, I mean, this is our annual meeting, so I want to give you an opportunity maybe even in this moment, just to say thanks for a good year with your pastor. Will you do that? I know you'd like to. Our final motion, Bill, is to, uh, to bring forward a delay servants that uh, support this church and are asking us to... Uh, accept them as lay servants, and that is Diane Tennant in Kim Wood, and if, Diane, would you stand, and there's Kim. All right. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, any need to, can we take these together? You good with that? Good. All right. Um, all right. All those who would be willing to affirm this ministry of these folks among you, would you please say yes? Yes. Any opposed? All right. Thank you. That's care for. Thank you both for your ministry. All right, um, the ministry shares report. It's a conspiracy. I have one little line to say. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm Linda Kari, I'm the finance chair, and we have really good news. We are current with our ministry shares, um, but I, Wendy knows I'm gonna say this. It's really important that all of the church members have an understanding of the finances of the church, so please feel free to come and talk to me if you want more information about what Ministry Shares does, wonderful services they provide, and then the personal finances of our church. I think it's very important. All right. Thank you so much. Um, yes, thank you so much uh, on behalf of the annual conference for your support of Ministry Shares. Uh, it's, it's the covenant ministry that we do together that literally enables us to touch the world for Jesus Christ in significant ways. Uh, in many ways, our ministry shares provide structure for that, as well as uh, providing uh, ministry in, in really all parts of the world. And, and as we're thinking about that, I, I want to let you know of uh, one of the things that's happening uh, in the life of our annual conference, 
and that is uh, a, a program called Imagine No Malaria. Most of you are familiar with Nothing But Nets, uh, which has been a three-year program to uh, provide bed nets for folks who need them, particularly in Sub-Saharan Africa, where 85% of deaths of mal from malaria uh, take place. And the good news is uh, that because of the last three years and uh, uh, nothing but nets, uh, we have experienced a uh, cut in half in the death uh, from malaria. It used to be, when we began this, that every 30 seconds someone died of malaria. It's now down to every minute. Uh, that someone dies. So, so that's good news, but it's also not great news because still every minute someone is dying uh, from this very preventable disease. Uh, your offering this morning, uh, uh, your noisy offering this morning, is going to be going uh, to support Imagine No Malaria. But I'm going to invite you to do more than that because we as an annual conference have taken on uh, a $1.5 million goal. And, and here's what's going to happen because of our participation and other people's participation, we truly believe, and, and people smarter than me have figured this out, uh, that doesn't take a lot, but people smarter than me have figured this out, that, that we really believe we can bring that number of deaths to zero by 2015. Won't end malaria, malaria will still be around, but deaths from malaria in this very troubled part of the world, we believe we can bring to zero by 2015. I want you to see the video uh, about this, and, and then in just a while we'll be receiving the offering at the noisy offering time. But we're also asking each church to set a goal and to have a point person in this annual conference uh, uh, program. So take a look at the video and uh, think about what you can do in the next year. Ask anyone on the continent of Africa about malaria and they will tell you about a painful, personal attack of the disease or someone they know who has died. When my children have malaria, I'm very worried because while you are still waiting to see the doctor, you will see someone die. Today, Imagine No Malaria is our opportunity to empower an entire continent to achieve a sustainable victory over malaria. It is time to do more. The United Methodist Church is joining leaders in global health as we work to eliminate deaths from malaria in Africa by 2015. In just three years, United Methodists supported nothing but nets with $7.5 million. Imagine No Malaria is a commitment to increase our support tenfold by raising $75 million in that same time frame. These resources will enable a comprehensive approach that includes not just bed nets, but working on a local level to break the mosquito life cycle by draining standing water where insects breed. Imagine No Malaria will fund existing hospitals and train community health workers in remote villages. School children are already spreading the word through educational skits. And finally, on a continent that doesn't rely on printed materials or newspapers, we will get life-saving information to people through radio and cell phones. Eliminating death by malaria is a realistic goal. With your help, we can save a million lives a year. Here's how you can get involved today. You can act to support Imagine No Malaria by planning activities to continue teaching your church and community about malaria. Go to www.imaginenomalaria.org to learn more or to make a donation. God can accomplish more than we can ask or imagine. Together, we can imagine no malaria. What a goal. What a great idea that we would have such a disease taken care of. Mm -hmm. You know, as I look at these crosses and listen to the things that were there, think about Jesus and what he's doing in our midst. Not just within these four walls, because there are some things that are within the four walls, but then some that are within the city limits of North Muskegon and the limits of Michigan and the limits of America. And as we think about the malaria, the limits of the world. So we want to just praise God, and we want to stand and sing together, shine Jesus, shine. And it might be our prayer that through these ministries and ones that we'll tackle in the coming year, that Jesus will shine through us. Let's stand and sing. Shine Lord, the light of your love is shining in the midst of the dark. 
The shining Jesus, light of the world, shine upon us. Set us free by the truth you now bring us. Shine on me. Shine on me. Shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land with the Father's glory. Blaze, Spirit, blaze. Set our hearts on fire. Flow, river, flow. Flood the nations with grace and mercy. Send forth your word, Lord, and let there be light. Lord, I could be an awesome presence from the shadows into your radiance. By the blood I may enter your brightness. Search me, try me, consume all my darkness. Shine on me. Shine on me. Shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land with the Father's glory. Blaze, Spirit, blaze. Set our hearts on fire. Flow, river, flow. Flood the nation with grace and mercy. Send forth your word, Lord, and let there be light. As we gaze on your kingly brightness, so our faces display likeness. Ever changing from glory to glory, nearer and here may our lives tell your story. Shine on me, shine on me, shine, Jesus, this land with the Father's glory, blaze, spirit, blaze. Set our hearts on fire. Flow, river, flow. Flood the nation with grace and mercy. Send forth your word, Lord, and let there be light. Amen for this praise that we can give Jesus for all the light he's shown on us. And as we turn to scripture, I invite you to remain standing this morning for it. As we hear this word from Jeremiah, one simple verse, verse that leads each one of us, says, For surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for your welfare and not for harm, to give you a future with hope. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. God. You may be seated. I know some of you are already kind of checking out the time and... I'll tell you what, why don't you all stay for lunch, okay? I won't keep you terribly long in this setting, but there's something yet to come that you do not want to miss. You know, it's God's desire that we embrace a great dream, that we embrace a great vision. God's dream for us, the, the people of, of Community United Methodist Church. I, I'd like to think that the prophet Jeremiah was speaking right to us. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope Plans to give you a future. We, we would all do well to take these words personally. You know, I, I think that uh, George and Sandy Harriman took these words personally. George told me recently that it's, it's this passage of Scripture which inspired their grandson's name. Think about these words. As many of you know, little two-year-old Jeremiah, as he cruises among us, he's been blessed with 
such special grandparents. People who, who would be bold enough to claim these words. I have plans for you. There's a reason to hope. The future is yours. Well, those that are close enough to the situation know there are challenges. But God says there's reason to hope. That's the kind of God that we have. Regardless of the struggles which seem inevitable, God sees great things in us. If only we could see those same great things. If only we could see that same great future for ourselves. About 350 years ago, a shipload of travelers landed somewhere in the northeast coast of America. The first year they established a uh, kind of like a town site, and the next year they, they elected a town government, and the third year the town government planned to build a road five miles westward into the wilderness. The fourth year the people tried to impeach their town government because they thought it was a waste of resources to build a road to the west. Unsettled land. Why go there? Here were people who had, who had the vision to, to see 3,000 miles across an ocean and overcome great hardships to get there. But in just a few years, they were no longer able to imagine their way even five miles further to the west. It's a good thing somebody did. With a clear vision of what we can become in Christ. No ocean of difficulty is too great for us. But without it, without any vision, we rarely move beyond our current boundaries. Some of you remember how the Missionary Society wrote to David Livingston in the deepest part of Africa at a time when things were pretty tough. And they asked, Have you found a good road to where you are? If so, please, we want to know how to send others to join you. Livingston wrote back, If you have those who will come only if they know there is a good road, I don't want them. I want only those who will come if there is no road at all. You know, it's kind of like the ask, not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. You know, same thing with our faith at its very best. Because in, in doing what we're called to do, we ourselves become the recipients of far more than we ever give. The work of the church has never been easy. This morning we, we could pull together many stories of churches rising up to beat great odds. But it's important for us to begin to realize that, that God loves us and God has a great dream, great plans for us, all of us, in our lives personally and together corporately as the church. Then it's from that foundation that we can join God's imagination and, and we can catch a glimpse of that dream for ourselves. It's so important that we believe. It's so important that we trust that this church, this church has a wonderful future. Helen Keller was asked once, what would be worse than being born blind? To which she immediately responded, having sight without vision. This church has got a great story. I've enjoyed reading of its first 130 plus years, hearing about the boom and the bust of the logging industry and the, the rise and the fall of you know, populations and, and the church here, sometimes down below 20 people because of the fall of no more jobs, no more money, no more anything the ebb and the flow of church life over the decades. 
As we read the history, we read about a fire in the 20s that leveled this church. And we watched it rise again up from the ashes. It's wonderful examples of vitality and strength. Faithfulness. But we stand today, we're in this moment, now. You know, even, even as we look back, even just 10 years, we know that today we have over 30% less financial resources on a given year than we had then. Less, over $100,000 less per year we're taking in right now. Can you imagine that? And this is our moment to do whatever God's calling us to do. I, I would imagine most of our leaders weren't really even in sync with that reality that the resources sometimes feel few. But look at what you did with, with what you have. It's pretty amazing. But what vision are we to claim that will fulfill God's dream for our ministry and our mission on Rudderman? There's a church by the name of Western Presbyterian in Washington, D.C., and I was reading this last week, and I ran across this story, and I just had to share it with you. It was originally located on H Street in the shadow of the World Bank building. There's several buildings, in fact, and the World Bank wanted to expand, and it offered to provide millions of dollars to move the church building. Well, you just don't go out and just build a building without a vision or how it will be used. The folks at Western Presbyterian began a serious conversation about their purpose. As they did so, they dreamed about a facility that would feed homeless people from the D.C. area. They'd already started to do that in their limited old space, and they saw an opportunity to expand that ministry into new space. Almost immediately, a group of church members began to protest that vision, they got really upset about the notion of homeless people trancing through their new facility, a fresh church building, and this group tried to stop the plans. Boom. They got so feisty in their protest that some of them even picketed the worship services in an effort to call the church away from this kind of ministry. Focus on evangelism, they said. Focus on winning souls, not feeding the hungry. One person even picketed right at the front door to try to keep people from entering for Sunday service. It got pretty vicious. But wisdom prevailed. You know, we, we need to do both. We need to do all that, evangelism and reaching out. And in fact, it is one and the same. The new facility was constructed with a large kitchen and a wonderful dining area for the homeless. However, uh, soon there was a lawsuit brought against the church by the city government. The area neighborhood commission tried to stop the church from opening its feeding ministry. Their argument was that church buildings are for purposes of worship and prayer and Bible study, not for feeding the hungry. The complaint said that the church, churches ought to be kind of sticking to their normal business. Things like preaching, singing, Bible study, prayer, none of this feeding the hungry stuff. Pastor Wimberly was astonished that that all of these protests came from Christian people, the members of the church who'd been picketing, and members of other churches in the neighborhood that were worried about the unsavory folks that might wander in. But guess what happened? A Jewish trial judge listened to the argument that the church ought to stick to spiritual things and stay away from feeding the hungry. Here's what happened. He wheeled around in his chair and he shouted, Look, I'm not even a Christian and I know better than that. Feeding the homeless and helping the poor and healing the sick, that's what churches have done for centuries. Case dismissed. We Christians... We sometimes lose our way. 
and don't understand our own vision. But the world knows our vision. Even the world has a vision for the church and what it should be about. And the world demands in these days a life-giving vision. God has such a dream for us. That's the first thing that I want you to hear this morning. The second thing is just so simple and just so clear. God calls us to sacrifice. God calls us to work hard and to give our very best to a vision which is greater than ourselves. Not, nothing complicated about that. I know the, the people of this church are capable of wonderful work. Even in, in my first year, I've already seen so many things that you're doing within these walls and beyond these walls. Gosh, you know, it's wonderful. It's fabulous. We're capable of such things. Paul Harvey, do you like Paul Harvey? I, I used to love listening to Paul Harvey and he once told of a rainy summer morning in Andover, Ohio. As Ray Blankenship was preparing his breakfast and kind of getting ready, he gazed out the window. It was a rainy time. They'd had tons of rain, in fact. He saw a little girl being swept along in the rain-flooded dra drainage ditch beside his home. Blankenship knew that, that further downstream, there, the water disappeared underneath a, the road and it emptied into a large culvert. And so he dashed out his door and he ran along the ditch and he tried to get ahead of the floundering child. And then at the very last possible moment, he hurled himself into the water. It was churning, it was deep. And he was able to grab this child's arm and he tumbled over and over with her. Within about three feet of the yawning culvert, raised free hand felt something, maybe it was a rock or something, and he, he clung and he tried with all his strength to try to pull he and the child up out of the water. And he thought, if, if I can just hang on until help comes. Well, he did better than that. By the time the fire department arrived, Blankenship had pulled himself and the girl to safety. Both were treated for shock. On April 12, 1989, Ray Blankenship was awarded the Coast Guard Silver Life-Saving Medal. This award is given for, for selfless service. You know, as a Rotarian, we always say service before self. And that's kind of a cool idea. It's one of the reasons I like Rotary. It's kind of like the church idea. But Paul Harvey telling these stories, remember what he says? He says, uh, and now for the rest of the story. Yeah. Ray Blankenship was at greater risk to himself than, than most people knew. For you see, Ray Blankenship can't swim. Paul Harvey, good day. <laughs> That's right. That's how it goes, isn't it? God calls us to self-sacrifice, even at times to risk ourselves as we work hard and give every bit of ourselves to a vision which is greater than ourselves. Sometimes it's difficult to imagine giving over to a mission and a calling, but that's precisely what God wants from us. God wants us to see the needs to reach out in love and to meet those needs. Simple. God's love for the world is so huge. The question is, can we see that love? First for ourselves, and then go and offer that same love to the world because we've been loved. In his book, No Wonder They Call Him the Savior, Max Licato tells a story of, of Maria and her daughter Christina. Longing to leave the poor Brazilian neighborhood, Christina wanted to see the world. Discontent with living in a home where she slept on a pallet on the floor and had a wash basin and she had a wood-burning stove. She dreamed of a better life in the city and one morning she simply ran away as a teen out in the world. 
breaking her mother's heart. Her mother knew what life on the streets would be like for her daughter. So Maria quickly packed to find, go out and find her child. On the way to the bus stop, she went to the drugstore to get one last thing. Pictures. She sat in a photo booth, closed the curtain, and spent most of the money she had, all but her bus ticket and a little bit of change, to take pictures of herself with her purse full of black and white pictures. She got on the bus to Rio de Janeiro. Maria knew Christina had no way to earn money. She also knew that her daughter was too stubborn to give up and just come home. Maria began her search through bars and hotels and nightclubs, any place with the reputation for streetwalkers or prostitutes. At each place she left her picture taped to a bathroom mirror, tacked to a hotel billboard, bulletin board, or fastened to the corner of a phone booth. On the way back, on the back of each one, she wrote a little note. It wasn't long before Maria's money and pictures ran out and Maria had simply had to go home. The tired mother cr- cried as the bus began its long journey home to the small village. A few weeks later, Christina was coming down the stairs in a, in a seedy hotel. Her young face was tired, her eyes, beautiful Brian, eyes no longer danced with youth, but spoke of pain and spoke of fear, and her laughter was broken, and her dream had become, well, it had become a nightmare. A bunch of times she'd longed to trade all those beds for her secure pallet back home. And yet the little village seemed too far away. And she reached the bottom of the stairs that day. Her eyes noticed a familiar face. She looked again and There in that lobby mirror was a a small picture of her mother. Christina's eyes burned, her throat tightened as she walked across the room, removed the little photo, and written on the back. Maria had inscribed this. Whatever you have done, Whatever you have become doesn't matter. Please come home. Christina went home. God is that way. First for us, all of us. Doesn't matter what you've done, doesn't matter what you've become. We can always go home. God. It's like Maria reaching out to her daughter even when her daughter didn't realize she was there. It's like God reaching out to us even while we're still in the center of ourselves. Jesus is there. Reaching, longing, desiring to bring us home. It is grace. It has kept us as Newton would write, safe thus far. Grace will bring us home. As we're saved, we need to have that same motive to go out into the world, again, beyond these walls, to reach out with that message of grace and love to the world. God has a great dream for us. God calls us to Sacrifice for others. And last, God calls us to be one in the Spirit. Remember, we talked about it last week. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. Unity. Too many many things can disrupt the unity of a church.